Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Qualcomm has just released the details of its latest smartphone processor in its 7 series. So not the 8 series, the 7 series. So we're talking about the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. And when we dive into it in a moment, you're going to see it looks suspiciously similar to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. There are, of course, some differences, but what it means for us is that we've now got a high-end, high-performance chip in the 700 series that borrows a lot of the features and offers a lot of the same performance as you get in the 8 series. And that can only be good for consumers and for the choice that we have when we want to buy or upgrade to our next smartphone. So, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive in and look at some of the details of the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. So as you expect, upgrades across the board, and these are all compared to the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. The Cryo CPU has been uh, improved, and we'll look at that more in detail in a moment. Uh, boost uh, peak speeds up to 2.91 gigahertz, over 50% improvement in performance. Same thing goes for the GPU. Adreno GPU provides two times improved performance. And the Snapdragon 7 Gen Plus 2 achieves up to 13% improved power and efficiency across the system compared to the 7 Gen 1. So this is what it looks like in block form. All of the normal things we expect to see. There is a CPU, there is a GPU. We have the hexagon processor, which is for the DSP and for the uh, machine learning stuff. We've got the ISP image signal processor. That's all the photography stuff. So again, reporting the same things as we were saying here. Now here's our first glimpse at the cryo CPU. What have we got? One times three times four architecture so there's one prime core three performance cores and then four power efficiency cores what are those cores well we'll find out just in a moment but we do know that it's up to 2.91 gigahertz so here is the layout of that one plus three plus four it's one cortex x2 so here we are now seeing a cortex x2 in the 7 series. This is absolutely uh, amazing at 2.91 gigahertz. Then three Cortex A710s at 2.49 gigahertz. And then four Cortex A510s at 1.8 gigahertz. And we'll do a comparison of those CPU layout, that CPU layout compared to other chips in Qualcomm's range towards the end of this. And the important thing to note here, this is built on TSMC's four nanometer, not Samsung's four nanometer. So what does that mean for CPU benchmarks? Well, here we've got Geekbench 5. So as you'd expect, of course, there are some big ones up here at the top, you know, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. We get here the Snapdragon 7 Gen uh, Plus Gen 2 here. So what are the numbers? Well, if you look at this, quite amazing. Uh, so the Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1 is 1312 for single core. And for the 7 Plus G2, it's 1211, 1211. So not much of a difference there. And in fact, you can see that here uh, on the graph uh, here. And the Plus one is up here. So if you go to the Snapdragon 8 not the plus version, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, it's 1233. 3. But if you look at multi score, you can see 4201, 4024, 3740. So the Snapdragon 7 Plus Generation 2 is really in the middle or the equivalent of the Snapdragon 8. Uh, 8 at uh, Gen 1 between the 8 and the 8 Plus. So that's pretty amazing that really we're talking about Snapdragon 8 level. Uh, performance for CPU now down in the Snapdragon 7 uh, range. Now, if you're watching a video on smartphone processors, pretty sure that you have a smartphone. What kind of case do you have? I can recommend to you Phoenix phone cases. They are ultra slim and look great on your phone. There's a link in the description below. If you use it, you help out this channel because it's an affiliate link. Now, when it comes to the GPU, we know that the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 offers twice the performance of the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. How does that compare to other uh, Qualcomm devices? Well, look here, there's quite a line here. You can see all these ones up here are almost 10,000 and upwards, 9,000 there uh, and upwards. So we can see the 8 Plus Gen 1. We can see the 8 uh, Gen 1 reference device. These are all, there's a kind of a distinct line here. Downwards here, what do we see? Well, we see the S2... 
uh, S22 Ultra with the Exynos 2200, so it's got the ARM Mali GPU in it. We see the Pixel 7 Pro with the ARM Mali GPU in it, and we see a previous 7 series, the 778G Plus, which is in the recently launched Nothing Phone 1. We can see a big difference there. So clearly, taking this block here, we can see that the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 is the leader of the pack. However, in terms of GPU performance, it's not touching really what's offered by the 8 series. And that's absolutely fine. So that it's a leading uh, GPU performance for its series. But unlike the CPU, it's not quite as close to the 8 series uh, as it is for, you know, for the GPU as it was for the CPU. But still significant a GPU performance here. Now, one interesting thing that uh, Qualcomm are saying about the GPU is that although it does offer that slightly lower overall performance, it has great sustained performance. So they're saying that uh, it basically, that's the performance you get at the beginning after you run for a long, long time. That's also going to be the performance you get, whereas other devices might start well and then they kind of, you know, they drop down uh, even more. Now, we've done some of our own testing and the line we're looking at is this one here, this straight line here. OK, that is the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 reference device from Qualcomm, not a phone from Samsung or or from OnePlus or Oppo or nothing or, or whatever. This is the reference device. However, you can see what they're talking about. Other devices, they start off well and then because of thermal throttling, they, you know, look at this one. Do shoot what one's that? The dot, that's the Asus ROG, uh, ROG Phone 6. And then this one here is the Samsung Galaxy S23. In fact, by the end of its run, after you've been playing for quite a while, the difference in performance is not that great. Now, one thing to note is that the uh, reference devices from Qualcomm are probably slightly thicker, slightly more bulky. They're not as slim and as aesthetically pleasing as the phones that we get in consumer devices. So maybe this number is going to change. However, still, for that device, that's pretty good sustained GPU performance. Uh, and when you see other ones here, even going down below it, when they started off even better because of the heat dissipation problem. So what else do we know about the GPU? Well, now we're seeing some elite gaming features turning up in the Snapdragon 7 uh, series. So we've got auto variable rate shading. We've got the Adreno frame and motion engine. And we've got volumetric rendering. These are all GPU tricks and tips that, they, that they've added into the was already in the 8 series. Now they're starting to trickle down into the 7 series. And also something else that's trickling down, now notice here at the top, this is Qualcomm slide, but they've shown here new in series. We've now got the 18-bit triple ISP. Previously, it was a 14-bit triple ISP. So it captures 4,000 times more camera data, up to 200 megapixel still shots. Uh, and again, this is something that now we're seeing trickling down. So there's going to be some good mid-range phones with the 7 Plus Gen 2 that got good cameras on them. That's definitely going to happen. And one of the other things they're talking about is low light. And so uh, mega low light photos, again, new in series, something they've put in the ISP here for the 7 series was previously in the 8 series. And again, another thing that's come down to the 7 series is 4K computational HDR video with triple exposure. So that triple ISP ISP literally means they've got three uh, signal processors in there and it can capture data at three different levels at the same time and then in real time kind of compress those together to be a HDR video. So as you can see HDR works by taking, you know, uh, the middle, a lighter and a darker and then putting them together to give you HDR. So that's new again in the 7 series. Again, leads me to believe there will be some nice phones in the mid-range with some good camera setups on them. Moving on to the 5G, we've got the X62 5G modem, which is the same as the previous generation. Basically, you're getting 4.4 gigabits per second downloads. Uh, and you're getting uh, millimeter wave and sub six uh, aggregation there. So this is what, the same generation before. It can give you good 5G speeds. If you've got 5G in your area, I still don't have 5G in my area. So, you know, this is way ahead of what even I could use uh, where I live. I don't know about you, but certainly where I live. And then staying on connectivity, we've got the FastConnect 6900, which basically means we've got Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, which means it will use 6 gigahertz capacity if you've got a 6 gigahertz uh, router up to 3.3 gigabits per second. That's a theoretical number, uh, but download. And then here they're just saying low latency, faster, better, all that. But Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E is what you're basically getting. Let's do comparisons here. What have we got? We've got the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. We've got the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. And we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. One. Now, before we go on, why is this the 7 
plus Gen 2, not just the 7 Gen 2. Well, they're saying because it really does offer such an increase in performance, you've got this X2, for example, Cortex X2 core in there and other things like that. It w They say it's not worth calling it the 7 Gen 2. This is the 7 plus Gen 2. And it also shows that the, the plus version might come out before the normal version. So maybe there's going to be a Snapdragon 7 Gen 2. I don't know. I don't have any information on that. But the plus uh, naming doesn't necessarily mean it has to come after a previous one that was without the plus. If they feel, if Qualcomm feel, marketing department feel that it's a high performance chip, they're going to stick that plus sign on it. So that's something uh, to watch out for in the future. So what have we got here? This was available in Q2 2022, available in phones. Announcements of different things when it actually came out in phones. Q2 2023, again, when it came out in phones, also happens to be very close to the announcement. And Q1 2022, again, in phones, probably 2021 when it was announced maybe there was a few devices that were you know announced right at the end 21 but in real term it came out in q1 2022 so basically we're looking at this year's phone devices and last year's devices with these chips so what do we got we've got the 7g one it's got four a710s and four 510s and one of them was clocked ever so slightly higher 2.4 2.36 is not really worth uh, writing uh, home about but now when we get to the gen 2 we're seeing this whole new core the x2 and so when you look across to the snapdragon 8 gen 1 that's also got the x2 slightly higher clock frequency you've got the 3a710 slightly higher clock frames again nothing much worth it worrying about and the a510 the a510 so you can see that this cpu setup is very similar to this cpu setup and when we get to the isp exactly the same we've got the uh, spectra triple 14 bit but then over on this side we've got the Spectra Triple 18 bit, Spectra Triple 18 bit. So again, this is very much a high end kind of setup. And then with the 5G mode, then both stay with the X62, and you've got the X65 in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And then the big thing here is you've got 4 nanometer Samsung for the uh, Gen 1 Series 7, 4 nanometer Samsung for the Air Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but now we've got 4 nanometer TSMC, which means that overall this is able to offer better power efficiency and they're able to tweak some of that performance. Now, we, I haven't put GPU on here because Qualcomm don't even give us the name of the GPU, it's just the Adreno GPU in the Snapdragon 7 G1 or G, you know, 7 Plus G2, whatever. But what we do know is that the Snapdragon 7 Plus G2 offers twice the performance of that in the Snapdragon 7 G1. And we've seen from the benchmarks that it's not as good. This is the one in the 7 G, uh, 7 Plus G2. It's not as good as the one in the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, but still top of its class for the 7 Series. So when, who, and how much Qualcomm confirmed that the first commercial devices with the Snapdragon 7 Plus G2 will launch this month, that's March 2023. It mentions that Redmi and Realme are going to be among the OEMs offering phones with the chipset. Qualcomm also told Android Authority, and if you want to read some more details about these chips and maybe study those graphs in a bit closer detail, you'll find them all over on the Android Authority website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Qualcomm told us that uh, they expect uh, phones with this process to cost between $400 and $600. So we're looking at mid-range to premium mid-range devices with almost flagship performance in them. So what does that mean for me and you as consumers? All it means is choice. Now, typically a high-end smartphone with an 8 series processor, and it's going to cost you, you know, thousand US dollars, maybe even more. Now we have the chance to get a lot of that performance and the features, that triple ISP, the uh, 5G modem. We've got that great uh, CPU setup. We've got a good uh, GPU in there, all the camera stuff, 4K HDR video. Okay, all that stuff is now in a phone that could be between $400 and $600. So we're talking about mid-range or premium uh, mainstream. That means the next time you're out looking for a phone, you don't necessarily have to look ho oh, oh, high, high, high to get all the greatest things. You can actually look at something in a much more reasonable budget and you know you're getting a good set of features and a good set of performance. Do tell me in the comments below what you think about the uh, 7 Plus Gen 2 and whether it would be something you consider buying in the future. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.